Today, I have three fall truck sign ideas from Dollar Tree. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own. Welcome back, everybody. I have chosen three signs to start with, and these came from Dollar Tree. You can choose whichever signs and colors and designs that you would like. The first one is a navy metal sign that has thanks on the tailgate, and this one is kind of an aqua or teal color, and it says fall something. And then this hanging sign that is green, which I really love. It's got that pretty watercolor look. And I'm gonna start dismantling that because we won't need all the bows and the hangers. We're gonna start off with the aqua truck sign. We're gonna make a really nice kind of a glow up or an upgrade to this sign. I'm just gonna go ahead and take all the hangers off of the other things as well. You can save them, you don't have to cut them, you can untie them. Okay, so for this sign, I have this little stand that came with something that I got, I believe at the thrift store, but it was a, it's a sign holder. It actually held up some words or something. Oh, that sign says fall harvest. Okay, so if you have something like this, that would be great, but um, I'm gonna show you what you can do if you don't have that. So I'm gonna go back to the truck here and take this white marker that came from Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna go around my edges and just kind of put a, a little more highlight on here with this marker. I'm going over the edges of it and I'm gonna be going around the bumper and all of that. You can do this if you would like. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Also, you could use a brown for this. You could use um, a furniture stain marker that you can get from Dollar Tree, or you can use black, or you don't have to do this at all. But I wanted to make this look a little more high-end than what we have, so I figured a little more detail couldn't hurt it. You can also go over your pumpkins if you would like. I'm gonna take my sanding block and try to get the remainder of that off. For some reason, when it was manufactured, it did not have a complete coverage on there. It just didn't. And so I thought, well, if I wanna keep those words, I can go back over it. And I'm just taking a metallic marker here and just going over the words. Now I sanded this down to where I felt was pretty smooth, but even so, when I went back over it with the marker, you can see there's some grit and it's making the print not look so great. So I didn't like it. I did let it dry and then I just took this, this is a sanding block too, but this is actually like a nail file that you can get from, I believe Dollar Tree. And I've just sanded that off with kind of a fine grit so that I didn't go all the way through my white. And then I'm going to erase it now. So I'm gonna use some of this linen white chalk paint you could use acrylic paint you know whatever you want to use in here or you could even use gray and maybe color the whole thing out so that you don't even have a a little tag sign back there but i wanted to leave it because at this point i wasn't exactly sure what i wanted to do here but this gave me the ability to have some free space to write in to put a sticker on or whatever so I've left this in the video so that you can see, you can fix your mistakes, and you have a few more options. Now, I'm gonna take the same bag of, of little words that I have had, that I have used already from Dollar Tree. This is a wonderful value. There's six in a pack, and I hope you can find them. They are just raw wood. You can paint them, you can leave them as is, you can use a marker, whatever you wanna do. And some of these words actually fit right on that, that, on that little sign there. Now this one is the one I'm gonna use. It's a little bit large for it, but it doesn't matter to me. So I'm gonna take this Cherry Furniture Repair marker, and you can see what the color is on paper. It's actually darker when you put it on wood, so you might wanna test your markers out first if you get them. They come in a three pack, I absolutely love them. Look at the coverage with these things. They are wonderful. And I have used them for furniture repair, and they work great. So you can choose whatever colors you want. There are lighter ones. You can, like I said before, you can use paint or some type of marker if you wanted to use a different color. Orange would probably be pretty, but my home is rustic 
and I thought that this brown color is close to the color of the wheels and it definitely has that rustic vibe that I'm always trying to go for. Little hot glue will attach this down and I'm gonna try to center it right there. And just press it down. Hot glue will hold it there nicely. Okay, so I'm gonna give you an option. If you don't have one of those stands that I have, you can easily use Jenga blocks, the ones that come from Dollar Tree, and make your own stand. I'm just showing you here how to do it. There's a little dent in my table, so I stood these up on my um, ruler just so I'd have a flat surface when I glue it. And I'm just going to end to end put this on here the sign's not heavy there's really no need in using wood glue or anything like that if you want it more sturdy and more permanent you can certainly use wood glue but i'm not going to be using this i'm going to use my stand i just want to show you how you can do it you're going to make two rows like this of six blocks each and just try to get them nice and straight and then you'll be able to sandwich your sign in between with some hot glue and that should hold it. You don't have to leave them standing up. You could actually lay them down and make it a little, little more flat. It may give it a little more stability. Well, there you go. Okay, but for me, I'm going to use the stand because this is what I have. I'm gonna add some hot glue to the bottom of these tires and just try to get it seated down in the little slot here. It'll pretty much hold itself there until it dries. And then after it's dry, you can go on to embellishing. Now these little wooden stickers originally came from Target, but I got them at Dirt Cheap last year because I could get them at a very cheap price. And I've used the same couple of packages of these wood stickers for two years. You've seen them in my other videos. I love working with these. They're so cute and they're thicker than a regular sticker so they can stand on their own and I like that. Plus they're adhesive on the back, obviously if they're a sticker, but you can reinforce it with hot glue or anything that you want. You're going to see me moving these pumpkins around a little bit as I try to get them organized and try to arrange them how I like them. And because they will stick there like that. Um, you can take them off and move them around a little bit if you don't press them down too hard, but you get the idea. It's kind of what I was looking at to see if I liked it, and I'm just going to move them around a little bit, put some more of these darker colored pumpkins, and remove a few of the little glittery ones. You can always paint them if you want them a different color. Okay, so now I have these little burlap type leaves. I have two different types. I have an oak leaf that is brown and I have a maple leaf that is orange. If I'm getting my trees right, feel free to correct me in a nice way, of course. The great thing about this is the long wire that comes off the back. It will allow us a little extra, mm, a little extra base to hold it down, I guess, it's kind of what I'm getting at because it'll go down in the slots underneath. But I like the way this looks. Looks like the truck is just speeding past the, the pumpkin patch and some leaves are kicking up by the tires. I like that. Okay, so you can bend these because they are on a wire, make them look a little more lifelike, give them some dimension, bend those wires together so that they stay in place. And then you can just press that bent wire right down into that little crack that is underneath the truck in the little stand. And it works out perfectly. And I'm gonna stand it up and I'm gonna add some hot glue just to lock it in place. And do that on both sides. You can trim it down if you want, but I feel like all of this stuff touching in there together and the glue on top of it really holds it in place. As I've said before, it's important when you're doing any type of, I guess, craft that you're going to have dimension. It's gonna be more 3D instead of a flat, like a flat sign or something. You kinda of wanna look at it from all angles. Whoops, I lost the pumpkin. Look at it from all angles and make sure that you have everything the way you like it. All right, now, 
got to have a bow on this. This is too cute not to bow it up. So here we go. I'm gonna use some of my thrifted, checked, or gingham, whatever you wanna call it, ribbon, and I'm gonna make an easy bow here. It's not actually named an easy bow, but it's pretty easy. You see what I did there. I made a loop, like a breast cancer awareness loop, pressed the loop straight down into the bottom part, and then, so then we have two loops and two tails. Easy, easy. It's such a simple bow, and I use it more and more because it's just so, it's pretty, it's a pretty bow, and it's a simple bow, and I think with rustic and farmhouse, you want kind of a simple look, you know? I've just used a little bit of, um, this was the tie off of one of the signs, I think, and just repurposed it to tie that up in the middle, trim off what we don't need. I used that because it was laying there. I do keep my scraps, so I keep them to the side in case I want to use them for anything else. I'm just fluffing that bow out a little bit. Everything is dry. Everything is set up nicely and it is in place. And then I'm going to add this little bow over here on the side of the truck. It's going to cover up the tag holes in the top. And I think it just gives it a cute little look. So fluff it out. I did this about a billion times when I craft. And I'm just gonna cut these tails in a slant. And then you can use a little bit of hot glue, just a little bit, cause you don't want it to shine, you know, to peek out through your ribbon. You almost want it to appear as though it is just sitting up there on its own. Now, this is a scrap off of something else I had. I'm gonna make, you see this really simple bow? Then I'm gonna double it so that I have four loops. All I did was double it back and now I have four loops and two tails. If you don't do the little, if you can't get that, that little double part, then you can surely do two bows and stack them on top of each other. We don't wanna make things more difficult than they have to be. But I thought this was cute. And it matches the kind of burlap that is in the leaves that we have there. I wanna add a little more. So this is fabric and feel free to alter anything that you get, any picks, any, anything that you get to make it your own. That's what the channel's about, right? Making it your own. So I'm making this leaf my own. And I'm just gonna cut a little piece and tuck it here because if I put the whole leaf there, it would be way too much way too big for that area. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna pull my wire off, put it aside, cause it can be used for another project. And I'm gonna trim down this orange leaf. And then just a little more hot glue and I'm gonna layer it on. I think I'm gonna put it behind there because I have the orange on the top. So I have a little variation in color there, I like that. And this is how it looks. And I like it. Do you like this little aqua sign? Be sure you follow me on my social media on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Now it's time for the navy truck wreath. Okay, this is a metal sign. I really like it. I'm gonna change it a bit though. What you're gonna need is some wired ribbon, whichever type that you like. I'm just showing you there, it's wired. I do change my mind on some of my my um, ribbon, so there will be some changes here. I have some twine, and I got this thrifted. You can use whatever you want. That happens to be braided. This came from the thrift store as well. And these beautiful pumpkin picks came from Dollar Tree. I have three of those. I have this little random pick. And then I have, I believe this one came from Dollar Tree also. You've seen this wreath frames. If you've been following me a while, I've used it on many, many projects. It is just a square Dollar Tree frame. It is a 14 by 14 wrapped with burlap and hot glued in place. And I've gotten a lot of good use out of this. Now, I'm gonna take the thankful off of here. I am thankful, but I'm gonna take it off. I'm gonna show you what you can do if you wanna color something, if you wanna make it a little different. 
Now I've taken a variety of blues here. I've got navy blue and two other type, types of blues. And I'm gonna cover up thankful. In case you wanna change this out to something else, you can certainly do that. So let me show you what you can do. I have found that a flat brush, and this particular flat brush is my favorite one, works really, really well when you're getting some detail work in straight lines. It works great for me, putting the paint down, and I just love it. It's very soft. So this is two coats of that navy blue. And because it is not the same color as the rest of the truck, I'm taking a little bit of blue chalk paint and the, the other lighter color of blue, and I'm just going to kind of dry brush over the back of this truck. This is to kind of blend the color out a little bit. It's going to make the color definitely not the same as the rest of the truck, but similar enough that it blends in. And I'm just gonna go over that until I get it the color that I like. I'm just kind of pouncing and dragging that brush across all over the back. And there you have it. And that's what it will look like if you wanna, you know, if you don't wanna add anything to it. But I'm gonna add some words, so I'm going back and I'm laying them down to decide which ones I think I want. I'm telling you, these little wooden words, if you can find them, best value ever, I think, at Dollar Tree for their fall decor. Also, you can choose any of these clings. They're easy to put down with a little bit of Mod Podge or glue stick. Just giving you an idea here. So I have several of these and I will be doing a video with these. You can use ribbon to trim it out if you would like. You could take the other pieces of sign that came off of the green sign, trim it down, and use that. But for me, I'm gonna take this worn penny metallic paint, and I'm gonna use the Hello Autumn sign. I love copper. I've been loving copper in my decor this year, especially at fall. I think the warmth that copper brings is just, it's stunning. It looks so nice with all the rich fall colors. And I've went more toward this and kind of gotten away from some of the galvanized and gone a little bit more into the coppers. And I am very glad I did. I love it. I feel like it's more of me, my style. Okay, so I'm taking this braided rope here and we're going to frame this out. I want to frame it out because I want to give it a little more dimension. I'm going to take a little bit of hot glue, put it right down in the center of that braided rope and then just pull the ends out these uh, finger protectors came with my glue gun there love this glue gun i will link it for you below and then i'm gonna just add my glue here and just go up the trim around the edge of this tailgate little at a time i'm trying to keep my lines as straight as possible you do have to curve in the corners but you can kind of Press that down so that it makes a little bit of a straighter edge. But you know, tailgates aren't straight anyway, they round it anyway. Okay, so pressing it down and we're gonna go all the way around. You could just use jute or you could use yarn or you could use ribbon, whatever you like and that suits your style. I'm gonna use my little cutters here and just cut that down, leaving enough room to be able to close up that braid. I'm gonna close it. And I'm gonna pinch it, press all of that into those fibers, pressing it down, a little more glue, and then I can trim off what's left, and that will keep it from fraying. Okay, so now this is nice and dry. Only one coat of that copper paint did the trick. I'm gonna add some glue on here, and then I'm going to just tack it down to that braided rope. It gives me some space so I have more dimension and there's a little play of light underneath the Hello Autumn sign. I like that, like the shadows. And I know I wanna put my truck in this corner. So now I need to figure out how I want to lay out my pumpkin picks. And I'm gonna do one on the side standing, one on the bottom, kind of under the truck and one across the top. And I'm not gonna put anything on that right side. This is easy enough to do. You can just take your little wire here, 
cut these off and you're gonna make little pins to clip it down hey guys if you saw that little sticker in the side if you want to show me some love I really love coffee and you can buy me a coffee it's that simple it's a great way to support my channel support my habit you can look in the links in the description box and get me a coffee and I'll be forever grateful okay so we made like little hair pin clips and we're just gonna push these down making sure that we get a little bit around the wire wreath that is underneath it's gonna keep everything stable if it is attached to the wire and not just the burlap so now I've just moved the truck out of the way and I'm gonna put my picks down you can cut these to make them the right length use your wire cutters you do not want to ruin your scissors on this not not your good scissors and then you're going to just press through and attach it to the back. You're going to see me do that here a little bit. Can you guys believe that I am almost at 3,000 subscribers? I am so grateful. And I know I say that a lot. But sincerely, I am grateful. This is a dream come true for me to be able to work and do something that I really love from home. I can still do homework with my kids. I can still take care of my house. I can still cook. Not that I do that very often, but I still can do it. And I can still thrift. It's just wonderful. It has been wonderful, a great experience for me. And I really am, again, using the word grateful, forever grateful. I appreciate everybody who subscribes, everybody who views, all my thumbs up and thumb thumbs ups yes and all the likes that I get it's it's a wonderful experience and I can tell you now from the experience that I have had if you're watching this and you're thinking about doing a channel just do it it's this is very rewarding I've met some wonderful people through this okay so we're going to use another wire just like we used to hold down those pumpkin picks and thread it through that hole that's already there in the truck for us Thread it through the hole and through the frame and it will hold it there. But now to keep it from kind of falling through here, we're gonna use a piece around the tire and you can barely notice this. Same thing, you're just gonna make a loop around it right at the top of that tire. You can see here what I'm doing. Press it flat, pull it tightly and it's gonna stay in place. I'm gonna take my cutters and take this little, I think this is like a cattails, take these apart and start laying those down. Now the good thing about this is you can either put those through the wires that we use to hold down the pumpkin picks or you can thread them right through your burlap. If you wrap your burlap and secure it tightly enough to your frame, your picks should stay in there nicely for you. So you can see in some of these spots I'm going through the wire loops and into the burlap so that you don't even see the ends of the picks. It makes um, wreath making very easy using those burlap, using the burlap to wrap your frames. Now, if you wanna give your leaves some more dimension because the ones that come from Dollar Tree and some of the ones that you get from the craft stores, they're flat. You can just put a little bit of glue. I know you can't see what I'm doing right there, but you'll see in a minute. Little bit of glue right in that bottom piece and then pinch it together. That's going to give it a little fold and it's going to give it a little dimension. So it actually looks like a leaf that blew off the tree with a little crinkle in it. I'm going to take some oak leaves. I'm going to take some maple leaves of whichever colors that you prefer. I'm using these colors because I like these colors. And just start adding those in the spaces where you feel like you need coverage. I look for spaces where I can see the wires still. I look for places that look a little bit bare and that's where I want to add my leaves. So that's what I'm doing. I did overlap some onto the truck. Easy to do. You can see there how I did that a little bit of glue pinching it letting it dry and then just laying it down there that gives it a little fold and it lifts it away from the surface a little bit 
It's given you some dimension so it's not flat. Cut off any bare wires that might be sticking out. I noticed that I had one and I went ahead and trimmed that down. And then I'm just going to try to, as I lay my leaves down, try to give some variety in color so that I don't have the same colors right next to each other. It gives your eyes a little something to dance off of. It gives your, you know, your, your eye keeps moving. It adds interest, so that's what we like. Okay, so here is my bow maker tool. I made this. It is a very popular video on my channel. If you want to see how to make your own, I will link that for you. I am taking some gorgeous burlap and lace ribbon and I'm going to make, I think this is a very simple bow to make. I could probably have made it in my hand, but I want to show you how to do it. If you have a bow maker or if you're interested in making one and well, you're interested in how to make one. So this is what I'm doing and you can see very easy. These loops are about five, six inches. The bow, this particular ribbon has lace on one side and no lace on the other side. So you need to twist it so that your pattern stays on top. Easy enough to do. This is a very good quality ribbon. I got it at the thrift store. It was a brand new spool. I could not believe it. But the quality is fantastic. It's a very stiff ribbon with wire. I think it's probably mm, close to three inches wide. And then here is some Dollar Tree ribbon. It's a beautiful plaid. I was so happy to find it again this year. I used it last year on some projects and found it again because I ran out. Now this has the same pattern on both sides and it has a pretty coppery gold trim on it. And that is on both sides as well. So you don't have to twist it unless you just want to. I'm gonna add that on top of it. Same process. I fold my ends under and tuck them down. It helps give a little poof to your bow. This bow is the same size. And you can just see me pulling the tails outward. I learned to pull the tails outward from Trish and Kay over at Crafting Cousins. Otherwise, I would have had them just sticking out to the side, but I, I like the idea of doing it this way. It makes it easier for, for when you get ready to fluff your bow. Now, this is not wired. This is an extra piece of ribbon that I got this year in the fall, um, fall section, I guess, from Crafter Square. But I thought it was very pretty, and I like the difference in the size. So I went ahead and put that on top. It's not going to stand up by itself because it is not wired. Just know that if you decide to use non-wired, it's a little, little more difficult to work with. I've just pulled that off, and I'm using some florist wire to just squeeze it and twist it down. And that blank space in the corner is where this bow will go. All right, so I'm going to take the rest of that wire that was on the bow, thread it through the back, twist it up and press it into the frame. Now at this point you can look at it and decide, okay, is how are the tails? Are they too long? You know, is it obscuring my truck? Is it overwhelming the frame? You know, just look at it again from all angles and decide what you need to do. It's better to leave it a little bit long and then trim it off because if you cut it too short, eh, you're not going to be able to fix that. Okay, so I've decided since this ribbon that I chose has a lot more, well, richer, darker colors, those kind of jewel tones, that I wanted to go back and add some more leaves that were more in that color family, I guess. So these are wine colored and some reds, and I went ahead and added those so that it would be, you know, that it would be a little more matchy, a little more cohesive. And you can see I fluffed the bow out over there already. I try to spare y'all some of that. I'm going to add a leaf right in the top of that bow. And then I pulled the pumpkin off under there because it was just kind of hanging. And I've decided that I want to glue it down on the bottom. I've glued it. I used a little, I think I used a paintbrush to poke a hole in the top and then just a little piece of stem off of something else to make a stem on my pumpkin. And this is how this one looks. 
pretty pretty I like it what do you think yes okay so now the third sign is the green truck hanging sign I'm just showing you I've got some picks here that I might want to use definitely need some florals I have a scrap of thrifted fabric I have some of the these are larger size they're bigger than Jenga's so I'm measuring those for you so you can see what size they are if you have this size great if you don't go ahead and use what you have and I'm going to use this gorgeous thrifted ribbon I pulled it right off of something else and brought it home with me and then this gingham here is the little truck and then here is a Valentine sign that I have used twice and we're gonna use it again I'm gonna lay it down on top of my fabric trim it off where I have at least an inch maybe a little over an inch on the edges so that I can hot glue it so I'm gonna put glue down and I'm going to tuck it over and this is how this is gonna look all the way around glued down nicely trim off what you don't need and it kind of looks like an ironing board doesn't it okay who still irons their clothes by the way is anybody okay so now you can see what these blocks are for I'm gonna make a little shelf almost in the back here this is gonna hold this away from the sign and it's also gonna hold our floral foam so that we can do a little arrangement I'm gonna use just plain hot glue here you can use something more permanent if you'd like but because I recycle my projects and use them again and again on many different things I don't want a totally permanent hold if I do want a permanent hold it's gonna be something that I don't intend to take apart it's gonna be in my house a long time so I found this cute little vinyl cutout it's a peel and stick that came from Target but I got it at dirt cheap and there's two in a pack and I thought hey let's try this this is a Merry Christmas sign I got for 10 cents from Dollar General last year and I used white chalk paint on the back of it I just used one good coat now I'm peeling this off and doing it with my fingers in case you are not someone who owns a Cricut then you wouldn't have transfer paper so I'm just trying to show you here it can be done without transfer paper but you have to take your time and you got to be sure of where you put it when you put it down because the font is so thin that you would definitely tear something trying to lift it I do believe but there you go and I'm, I'm okay with where it's laying because I can't change it now and I'm just gonna take my leaves and just add those on there kind of wherever and this is what we have for that now I'm gonna rough it up a little bit by taking that same fingernail file sanding block and just go all around my edges I know that I want to put it on the top and in order to get my placement and to make sure that it is straight I'm going to use this little ruler at the top just to give me a little space here so I know where I want to put it I've added hot glue on the back of the sign and I'm just gonna press it down so that it doesn't come apart you can put something on top of this to hold it in place until it is firmly set if you would like or you could use some clamps over the spots with the glue so that it stays in place until it is dry okay so now I'm just using my foam my block against the foam to determine how thick I want my pieces of foam to be I'm just using a metal ruler to just slice this right down and you dust it off and get all that stuff off of there because it's gonna make a mess I don't even have to use hot glue to put this in place I've trimmed another piece for the other side and it fits in there and sits perfectly by itself now the truck is gonna sit like this and I'm gonna use this again as a spacer to make sure that I get my truck exactly where I want it this isn't glued down it's just a spacer for making this straight I'm gonna use hot glue again all around the edges to place this down I'm standing above it trying to make sure that I have it somewhat centered and I'm gonna place it down 
You can slide it a little bit. Now I'm going to weight this down because I don't want anything to come away. Now for the bow on top, I'm using this beautiful pumpkin ribbon. It is wired. And I'm going to just pinch it up just like that, same as we did on the other one. But this one is going to be stacked. I'm going to add several layers on this one. I'm going to pinch this one up in the middle. Put that on top. And then I was on the search for what I wanted to go in the middle. I wanted something a little more burlappy, something a little more neutral. So I took some of this burlap, I guess we're going to call it ribbon. I don't know if you would call this ribbon or not, but it is definitely not wired. You can pull the edges away if you would like to, and that will help it to fray and make it a little more rustic. If you fold it against the curve, that will also help it lay a little more flat. And I've decided that it should go right in the middle. I like the way that looks. It gives a little buffer between the prints. Now I'm gonna take another little piece of scrap jute and just tie a couple of knots in the center there tightly so that it doesn't come apart. I'm just using my thumb to hold that knot in place because it will slip, it will slip. I'm gonna dovetail my ends here And like I said, pull, pull your little excess away if you would like a little bit of fraying. It's really a cute rustic look. And then I'm just going to fluff. I'm going to adjust a little bit to make sure that I get my loops the size I want. And then I'm going to dovetail what else needs to be dovetailed. Fluffing that bow as usual. You know how we do here on my channel. We fluff it to death. And then trim off this because you're not gonna need this on, on here. We're gonna glue it. Now I know I want it at the top. I'm gonna put a good bit of glue up there on my top. Above that sign, I'm going to center it above there and then use a clamp to hold it in place. This clamp actually came with my lighting kit, so, but you can use any kind of clamp you have. So now I've switched up my florals and I'm going to use these picks. Use whatever you like. But I like these, they kind of look, they don't look like wheat, but they give that airy feel, and I like that. I think it's a very farmhouse addition to this rustic project. As well as that striped fabric in the background. I'm gonna add some of these little orange flowers here and there. If your picks are too small, then you can just add a pick off of something else. And these beautiful little puff balls. I don't know what these are, but they, they came from Dollar Tree and I love them. I'm gonna put them as little twinsies and I'm gonna put them in sets of two in here. I think they look really cute in here. What do you think? Do you like these? Have you crafted with these yet? I've seen a lot of people haul them, but I have not really seen people using them. So I'm just curious. All right, I'm trimming up a little bit on my bows. Again, trim where you need. Move things around. If you need a little bit of glue to hold things in place, you can go ahead and do that. And this is our third sign. What do you think about this? Cute, huh? All right, so we're gonna need a device to hang it. And I'm going to use a little hanger off of another project. I removed this off of something else. I'm gonna add some hot glue here, right around that hole and just put it right there. It's not a perfect fit, but it won't matter. That glue is gonna take up the space. So here we go. Here are our finished truck sign DIYs. What do you think? I hope that you try some of these. Which is your favorite? Do you like the aqua, the green, or the navy? I would love it if you would subscribe. Thank you for coming back if you are already subscribed. And give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed these projects. If you have any requests for projects, let me know below. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.